Alleluia! Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! We are yet in the Easter season. It's only the fifth Sunday of Easter. We have a, a couple more Sundays to go before we complete the season of Easter. Welcome to everyone, whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you're watching the service uh, on YouTube here in Red Deer, uh, whether in your day pajamas at two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, whatever. We're happy that you have chosen to worship with us uh, this morning. This way of worship still seems to be somewhat contrived. We'd much rather have you here in the sanctuary. We'd much rather see your faces and hear your singing and have you participate in the liturgy and have your actual presence with us. We would much rather serve you Holy Communion here at the altar rather than in your home. And on that note, please remember to get yourself a plate with some crackers, some bread, some, some wine or some grape juice or whatever works for you. And we'd much rather be able to greet you afterwards and have coffee together after the service and share a few words about what's going on for you in this strange and confusing time that we're living in. Since this is Mother's Day, it's uh, fitting that we reflect on how mothering can help us understand God's love for us. Our mothers are often the ones in the family who represent God to us and to who empower their children to live in ways that are, are pleasing to God. We know that's not always the case. Uh, for some, they may have had troubled relationships with their mothers, and we need to honor, remember our mothers for who they were. So then we will continue the service, or begin the service, I should say, with thanksgiving for baptism. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. And to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll now sing the opening hymn, Ten Thousand Reasons. Bless the Lord.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing our hymn of praise. tell me why this Sunday is a special Sunday. I'm, uh, I'm going to draw some clues for you. So uh, there's two of them there, there's a third one. Okay, Let's see if you can guess it from this. Why is this Sunday special? Let's have a think. Got it? That's right! It's Mother's Day, well done! Now some people will spend time remembering their mothers on Sunday. But inside the church family, Mothering Sunday is even better. And do you want to know why? When Jesus died and took away our sin, he made everyone who believes in him into a big family. So in his true book, he writes this, Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Now that means that every woman in our church who believes in Jesus becomes a spiritual mum to those who are younger than her. Now we know, don't we, that a mother isn't just the person that you were born from. People can have mothers in all different shapes and sizes. I'm, I'm not sure that's politically correct, sorry. We want to celebrate on Sunday every woman who is part of our church family and thank them for being great church family mums. 
Now here's how we're going to do that. I want you to pause the video and go get a piece of paper and some pens. Now, right, you've done that. Now you need to write down words that describe our church family mums, so the women in our church. Words like loving and gentle, kind, nice to hug, strong, words like that. Now, on the other side of the piece of paper, write down the word mother just like this. Then we need to fit those great words into that word just like we're doing here. So we've got the word strong, that's got a T in it, nice to hug, has got an H in it. See if you can do the same, choose some different words and uh, see if you can make your poem like this. And once you're done, send them in to us, take a picture, uh, send them in to us so we can share as a church together how we celebrate the ladies in our church who are spiritual mums to us. This assignment isn't just for the kids. What we would like to see happen is the parents also do this little exercise. What does your mother mean to you? Do the assignment and take a picture of it. Post it on either your home Facebook page or on the church Facebook page. Have fun. Our psalm today is Psalm 31, verses 1 to 5, 15, and 16. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Our lesson comes from 1 Peter 2, verses 2 to 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builder rejected has become the very headstone, head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they, would, or as they were destined to do. But you who are chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sunday in the Easter season. 
is found in John chapter 14. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And if you're standing, you may be seated. People of God, grace and peace to you this day in fullest measure from Jesus, our Savior and our friend. Amen. Last Sunday, for those of you who watched the service, Daryl introduced you to our good friend Mary from the States. Well, <clears throat> this, year, this week on Facebook, she posted this little story, which I'm going to share with you. And now that you know Mary a little bit, you uh, will, might find the humor in it as well. It's called, I Hate the Virus. Mary says, what a hoot this afternoon. Gabe, her dog, and I went for a walk. As I was walking down a side street, a little girl, I'm guessing close to four years, was in her front yard and struck up, struck up a conversation with me. She said, the little girl said, so my shirt doesn't sparkle. Mary, no, but you have a pretty star on your shirt. Little girl, yeah, but it doesn't sparkle. And I hate the virus. My grandpa and grandma can't come to my house and my dog Bella is in heaven, but my dog Maya has to stay in the house. How old are you, Mary said, shrugging her shoulders. I don't know. Are you about three years old? I don't know. And with the virus, you can't throw up on people. You have to throw up in the toilet or on the kitchen floor. <laughs> Mary says, the virus isn't fun, is it? No and I can't play with other kids. I hate the virus, and my shirt doesn't sparkle. <laughs> but Mary said, are you having fun playing outside? Well, yeah, but the virus. I can't play with my friends. <laughs> Mary writes, the whole time she was very animated with her hands and her facial expressions, I wanted to run to her and give her a hug. But dang it, with the virus, at least you should have a sparkly shirt. <laughs> I chuckled all the way home and it reminded me of the gift of being an older adult and having the time to just listen to kids. And it reminded me of how our children are struggling through this hated virus time as well, maybe just in different ways than we do. Well, thank you, Mary. You've been with us again today. Now let's pray. Loving God, we have trouble even remembering what day it is. Days seem so unreal, pandemic, political arguing, 
people still dying from COVID and fears that less isolation may cause more spread of the virus. Yet our faith calls us to believe that your eye is on the sparrow and on all of us humans as well. We believe, Lord, help us in our times of unbelief. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. What kind of crazy talk is this, Jesus? You've been preparing these friends of yours for you to leave, and you must know that the last few days that you've been with them have been terribly challenging for them. Maybe you mean these words to be comforting, but I suspect maybe they've missed the mark. The disciples' hearts are troubled, very troubled, and they have reason to be troubled. And so they ask questions. Now, context is always important, and so we have to back up a little bit. The lectionary takes us back to Monday, Thursday evening. Don't ask me why they did that, but let's work with it. Jesus has just finished a Last Supper with his disciples. He's washed their feet, which totally surprised them. He's given a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. He's predicted Peter's denial. He's kind of foretold that one of them around the table is going to betray me. And eventually Judas walks out. And he's told his friends he's about to leave them. And they can't go with him. Lots of reasons to be anxious. Peter and Judas, that would be bad enough. But Jesus leaving, and we can't go, kind of a double punch in the gut. Very likely, that's how they felt. These words sting, and they cause great fear. What's he talking about? How will we survive alone? What will we do? Where will we go? Why is the ground shifting under our feet and everything changing? They're stunned, and they're beginning to panic. And at precisely this moment, this week's passage begins. Now, before going into the story, and stay awake. Don't fire me, but listen carefully. I invite you to set aside what you have been taught about one verse in this text and think beyond that and dig a little deeper with me into this text. Verse 6 is one of the most famous and most infamous verses in the whole New Testament. Jesus remarked that no one comes to the Father except through me. Too often, folks, this sentence is distorted into a dogma of exclusion, as if Jesus was saying, if you're not a Christian, there were no Christians at that time anyway, but if you're not a Christian, you're damned. Nope. This is a drastic misinterpretation of what Jesus is saying because right here, Jesus is reassuring his anxious disciples. It's all about reassuring his buddies. This reading from John is part of what is called the farewell discourses, which simply means Jesus' last words of guidance and consolation to these friends of his. Jesus is not lecturing about who's going to get to heaven. Rather, this is plain, good old pastoral care from Jesus. He's assuring his friends that his imminent departure is not abandonment, but rather a move that will make way for an even deeper intimacy together. It's as if he's saying, yeah, on one level I'm leaving, but on another deeper level, we're going to be closer than ever together. We're going to feel more intimate than ever. Trust me and trust the one who sent me. And here we are, all sitting, a few of us in here, sitting six feet apart like good people, except our, except our couples. Isolated in our homes, out for a walk once in a while, grocery store, maybe work in the office. All wondering what life will look like for the next months and years. What's going to happen to our families, our city, our world, our nation? When will we gather in church again? For Daryl and myself, we're beginning to really fear. When will we be able to cross that border and see our kids and our grandkids in the US? 
Where is Jesus in all this fear, death, and loss? And how will we find him if he's gone to a place where we can't go? Why does the world seem to be going crazy with killings in Nova Scotia, murder-suicide in Strathcona County, a woman shot in Black Falls, a police chase with an RCMP member being shot, and then a man killed on the QE2 outside of the Duke just this week. The question of why is an important question. It gives voice to our deep need to understand, but it's also often quite difficult, if not impossible, to answer. As a parish pastor, I've often had the opportunity to listen to people's why questions. I encourage people to ask instead, what can I offer to make the world better now because I knew this person, my friend, who has died? Or, because I have to live with this disease now, how can I maybe help someone else who also has it? What questions or how questions instead of why? Instead of answering the why question of the disciples, why are you leaving us, Jesus? Jesus answers the question of who? He is the one who loves them and in turn shows the Father's love. He is the one they have known and who will provide for them. Sometimes, you see, we want answers, but what we really need is relationship. Here's my friend Thomas again. I love Thomas. He comes in asking for a road map. Jesus, how can we know the way? Philip chimes in asking for proof. Lord, show us the Father and then we'll be happy. Give us some coordinates so we can find our way, Jesus. What they want and what we all want, if we're honest, is a GPS religion. By that I mean a five-point plan, the 12 steps, the 10 commandments, do A, B, and C, and then for sure you will arrive at your destination D. Jesus reminds them, you already know the way. You know the way we've been traveling. You know the truth we've been learning. And you know the life we've been living. Just keep going and I'll be right here beside you. Because I am the way, I am that truth, and I am that life that you're looking for. I'm not merely your guide, I'm the way. Jesus is the road map. And that sometimes ever-changing and confusing business of relationship is always present. We have to trust and we have to be patient and we have to be willing to be vulnerable. It's all part of living with Jesus. In other words, Jesus insists that even though he's leaving, his connection will be so intimate that separation will be unthinkable. Their lives following that new commandment to love one another as I have loved you will be sure signs of their ongoing companionship with him. The tone of this teaching is compassion, not admonition. Well, people, how do we see God active in our world today? How do we say, show us the Father? How are we going to find the Father? Well, a question that Bishop Larry posed to us clergy on Zoom this week was, where do you see the footprints of Jesus in your day, even in these messy COVID days? I suggest the answer to the question could be something like this. If you want to see what God is up to right, right now, pay attention to what God's people are doing. Watch and note what is being done in Jesus' name. And not only by those who profess to follow Jesus, watch to see how Jesus is working through people, any caring people, who might not be professing Jesus at all, but Jesus works through them. Right now, all around the world, many of God's children are feeding the hungry. They're supporting those who have come across economic hardship, lost their jobs, they're helping those who have problems, they're helping, they're calling their neighbors, they're putting little baskets in front of the neighbor's door with groceries or with little goodies or little chocolates or 
they're writing letters to seniors in some of the care homes who they know are lonely. And in the news not so long ago, there's a restaurant in Fort Saskatchewan. Of course, they can't serve people, but they're still cooking. And they put food together in, in packages, two, three hundred, I think 900 packages went out once, given to people who need a meal a day. And they do this for many days. God's people are putting the needs of others before their own needs. Right now, when others are despairing, people of faith find hope. People of God, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust that you do, in fact, know the way. That sometimes risky but ultimately life-giving way of Jesus. Like Thomas and Philip and Peter, you know Jesus. You know his life. You know his love. You know his truth. You know that sometimes you hunger for him and you seek after him and you hope in him. You know the way, and it's Jesus. No, the way isn't what we thought it might be. It's demanding and precarious. Sometimes a rogue virus or a sickness interrupts. But the invitation of this gospel is still an invitation to a confident faith. Not because we're experts at finding God, but because God has already found us. You see, God is never lost, people. It's us who lose our connection with God and we wander off. But God isn't the one who gets lost. Sometimes, just like Jesus' disciples, we want answers even though what we really need is relationship. God can handle your doubts and your fears and your questions. Whatever we might ask, Jesus will keep offering not simply answers, but he offers himself. Because as important as why is, who is even more important? For we live and we die and we are born again and through in and through our relationship with Jesus, the one who has conquered death and fears. And our times are in God's hands, as we heard in the psalm, and we are not abandoned. So spend this week, people, watching for Jesus' footprints. And send me an email about what you might happen to find. I'd like to know, because I'm serious. I want you to look around. Where do you see Jesus active and alive, even in this stupid time of virus? Do not let your hearts be troubled, people. And keep your eye out for a sparkly shirt to give to some little girl who needs it. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is Choose to Hope.
Please join me in the prayers of intercession. Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of life, especially for the gift of your Son, the Christ, who is our way, our truth, and our life, who continues to expand our limited understanding of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray that you be present with those suffering from storms or floods, from drought, wind, or any of the tides of creation that seek to break down your creation and destroy the work of your hand. We remember today the people of Fort McMurray who are coping with the damage of the recent flooding. Grant them strength as they seek to recover. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we pray that you be comfort to those who are afflicted, the sick, and those who have died. Embrace them in your hand. Hold them tender, like a mother her child, like a father his infant, like a friend cares for another. God of comfort, we bring to you those who are suffering from acts of violence recently, the family in Sherwood Park, and the family of the young man from Black Falls who was killed in the incident with police at Leduc yesterday, on Wednesday, and others whom we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the scientists and researchers who are working hard to find medicine for the treatment of COVID-19 and those seeking for a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our church leader, National Bishop Susan, Synodical Bishop, Bishop Larry, Assistant for Mission Prima Samuel, our church council members, office staff Darlene, music director Nadine, and our interim pastors Daryl and Rita, and Pastor John Lentz, who is preparing to be the next pastor here at Good Shepherd. Continue to strengthen your church as we seek to do your work in this challenging time. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we ask that you so fill our hearts, our minds, our spirits with your love and compassion that we can be your hands and your heart in the world. Amen. This is the time in the service when we would normally ask to receive the offering. And so we remind you that the ongoing ministry of the church continues. We thank you for your generous support. Uh, of our congregation and the larger church in your prayers and monetary gifts. And I think you're all aware of the many various ways uh, that you're able to give through uh, PAR, pre-authorized remittance, or dropping off your envelopes here at the church, and e-transfer is on the way. It's not quite there yet, but it's soon coming. We'll call on the worship assistant for the offering prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Just a word. 
destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their ending hymn. Because we cannot receive it in our usual place, come to us now where we are. Be present to us in bread, in wine, and in each other. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and drink. This is my, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
We pray now in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive us who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now Jesus welcomes us where we are, and so we share together the body of Christ the bread of life for you. The blood of Christ, the cup of healing for you. And now may the mystery, wonder, and peace of God's presence fall upon you like a soft, gentle rain, soaking into your heart to comfort you, to bless you, and make you whole. Amen. We sing the post-communion canto. presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the grace of God given us in Christ Jesus flow over and through you. May the love of God live in and around you. May the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. May we, we go, go forth as God's, God's beloved and blessed creation, creation God's, God's image of love and, and grace. grace. Amen. Community announcements. I don't have a lot of things to, to say, but thank you to those of you who have gathered this afternoon to help us uh, put on, to put together this uh, uh, worship experience. Thank you to uh, Glenn, especially running the, uh, the camera, to uh, to Bill on PowerPoint, to the dean here at the piano, and Bonnie and Dar and Ron and Tony and Don and Peggy and Pastor Rita and myself. And Alan is here as an observer to keep us on the straight and narrow. <laughs> um, Thank you to all of you to make this possible. Uh, next week, uh, Pastor Rita and I will be away, but Pastor Art Weiss will be <coughs> with you to lead the service. Any other mentions that should be made? Happy Mother's Day, which we <laughs> said earlier, but yes, <coughs> we need to say it again. So. Then we will sing our sending song, Shout to the Lord, and here's a chance for kids at home to get out your spoons or your pots and pans and make noise as we sing the song. <laughs> Jesus, my 